Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you how to calibrate the feed motor or your encoder on a Fusion channel letter machine. The first thing you want to do is you want to do a home, do a manual home. And that's important, that's going to come into play later. All right? Now I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to use a slide square. Use one of these. Don't use anything but this. It's just easier to get in there. I'm going to slide this on the material. I'm going to bump into the straightener, and I'm going to draw a mark. Now from that mark, I'm going to measure 48 inches down this line here. There we go. Get some help. Um, I'm going to burn an inch, so I'm going to go to 49. You might want to make sure that tape's nice and square. Are you going to the top part of the tape? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go to 49. And you good? Yeah. All right, good. Make sure whoever you get helps you with this step knows how to hold a tape, can pay attention, can, has good eyes. This is very important. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even double check it to see if the guy's holding the tape's paying attention. Maybe he's not. You'd be surprised. You ask him to hold the tape in the same spot again, and it's off. But Ruben here's a good guy, so we're dead on. So now I'm going to just move the material 48 inches. I'm going to go to Tools, Feed, 48. Now, I'm going to go over here and see if this material moved 48 inches, and it did not. So I'm going to put a tiny mark here, and I'm going to measure that distance. It's less than an eighth of an inch. You can get calipers, but I'm going to call that 0.1. If an eighth of an inch is 125, that's 0.1. So it's, it's 0.1 too short. So here's the formula to figure that out. Um, you take your, your commanded distance and you divide that by the distance it moved. And then you multiply that by your current value. Go to Tools, Tool Settings. Feed encoder counts per inch. 1664. Ah, I screwed up. I'm starting again. Uh, 48 divided by 47.9 times 1664.7 gives you a new value of 1668.17 okay so just to be clear on that it's commanded distance the number you typed in 48 divided by the distance it moved times the current value in there so I'm going to go ahead and put that number in here and uh, okay, and, and don't go pat further than one pass to decimal. All right, now we're going to click update. Okay, so. Now I'm going to reload the software. Um, uh, okay, so now I'm going to do a home. And the reason why I did a home first is so that my mark is in the same spot that I started with the first mark I put in. 
Because I want to do this, I'm going to test this. I'm going to test my value. So, go ahead. All right. I'm going to go feed. I'm going to say okay. Sit down. Right, kind of draw a new line, and I'm perfect. I'm right where I need to be. All right, so now there's one more thing we have to, to calibrate. All that calibrated the encoder, and the encoder is a wheel that rides on the material independently from the motor. Now we want to calibrate the motor. We're going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to do a home. I'm going to confirm that it homed correctly. So when it comes back and it finishes, I'm going to use my square. And I want to be sure that, yes, it started. Just to be sure. This is very important. Make sure it's right. Now I'm going to go tools uncalibrated feed. Now, this is, all this does is move the motor. And it doesn't ask for aid from the encoder. I think we're good. That one's good. Now, if it was off, I'd do the exact same process. I would have gone into my, I'd have taken my commanded distance, divided by the distance it moved, times this number right here. Feed motor counts per inch. So just a little recap on why we have two numbers to calibrate is that you're your machine is going to tell the servo motor to move the material. Then, before that command's complete, we ask the encoder wheel that's riding independently from the, the uh, motor, we ask that encoder, did is that move correct? And if so, it all ends. If not, the motor makes secondary moves to make the correction. You never know. You could have something could have slipped um, as you're pushing material through, something could have happened. So it's, it's basically a slip detection. Um, so that's why we have two values. Your encoder though, that's the final say. That number's gotta be perfect. Uh, that's that's the, the top number there. And uh, that's the number that, that, you know, when a machine puts a notch in, uh, actually bends, that's, that's, the, that's the final dimension. Um, and that's it, that's how you calibrate your feed distance.